Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with your co-host, the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice, and his wife, Jeannie. Michael and Jeannie share with you the wisdom of the ancient Aramaic internal process of forgiveness. They offer tools and support five days a week. They will support you in building a solid foundation within yourself to live in pure love. In Aramaic, Rachma. Michael is the author of Why Is This Happening to Me Again? For more information on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.whyagain.com. And now your co-host, The Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael and Jeannie Rice. To the brightness within you and the truth that Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice. And today is our Memorial Day celebration, day number 164. Michael will tell you a little more about that here in a few moments. Dr. Tim's managing our chat room uh, for us today. He's already online. For some reason, I can get on the switchboard, but the hotel here has the chat room blocked. I don't understand technology sometimes, but we are here. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, sweetie. Welcome, everybody, to Mind Shifters Radio. And our calling number is area code 646-200-4169. We would love to hear your sweet voices, asking questions, sharing thoughts, sharing experiences about the work. Awesome call yesterday from... uh, Nene, who shared that uh, she was working with a client, Nene, someone who had done teacher's training last year, had, was working with a client, client whose son had disappeared from her life 10 years earlier and suggesting some worksheet work for her and inviting her to read the commitment to a picture of her son. Three days later, lo and behold, after 10 years of no communication whatsoever, her son shows up knocking on her door. This is an energetic world, folks. There's nothing that you know about the world that has to do with stuff and matter that's true. It's all a lie. It's all a fraud. It's time for us to wake up and start to understand how we function as energetic beings. The request that Jeannie made about honoring Memorial Day is a request we make in each show. And the idea is, as energetic beings, we have the power to change the game. How do we change the game? Well, you've got to know what cause is. If you don't know what cause is, then you can't change effect. You're stuck with it. However, once you wake up, then you know where cause lies. And forgiveness is a way that you go inside yourself and find causes that you didn't know were there and change them. Now, was it this woman's fault that her son disappeared for 10 years? No. Did she have a part in it? Yes, there was cause in her. And when she changed that cause by bringing forward the active presence of love, instead of sadness or grief or resentment or whatever was going on with her, I'm not privy to the details, then cause changed and all of a sudden her son shows up. So it's, it's a powerful thing to start to be responsible for your life. And when we invite you to honor Memorial Day, the idea there is that each day you look in you for a cause of some sort of hostility or fear, which is the root cause of war. If you go back as far as the ancient physics language, Aramaic, you'll find a statement in the scriptures that speaks about the war that happens within our members, meaning inside of us, is what causes external war. So if you're willing, we invite you to engage in the forgiveness process. That doesn't mean that you let somebody else off the hook because you have something painful happening in you. That means that you go inside and you find the cause of your pain. You do that through the Aramaic technology of forgiveness. Nothing to do with letting other people off the hook. That's all foolishness. That's all a a total, again, another fraud. Letting other people off the hook because there's something going on inside of you doesn't change what's going on inside of you. Forgiveness changes what's going on inside of you. It changes cause. And so the invitation is to please 
pick up the worksheet process. If you're not familiar with our conversation on forgiveness, please go to the website, www.whyagain.com. On the right-hand side, you'll see a link that says Download Worksheets. If you click that link, you'll find Chapter 24 from the book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? And it will give you the reasoning and the process of forgiveness. The second link is a worksheet, the latest seven-step reality management worksheet. The third link is a radio show that done it back a couple of months ago with a very brave young lady who did a major, probably one of the most powerful worksheets I've ever been in, privy to participate in. You'll see exactly how the process works and what it does in terms of changing what's happening inside of us and changing cause. The fourth link is uh, still another uh, radio show where we guided someone through a worksheet. And we put that one up there in particular uh, because it's it's powerful. It's showing how the tendency of the mind is to always focus its conversation on everybody else. Well, the problem is internal. And so we appreciate Richard and his willingness to be out there and, and expose himself. Richard someone you hear from on the show fairly regularly. And uh, Richard uh, was was playing the game of, you know, being in that conversation about somebody else. And you can see what the effort that it takes to bring yourself back to cause within self rather than focusing on effect outside of self. And then there's a new link that was just put there, a fifth link. We've hear, heard from a couple of people recently, well, I just don't have anything to do forgiveness on. So we came up with a list of possible topics. Now, if you go through that list and you have no issues resonated by anything on that list, I want to meet with you personally, please, and I want to touch the hem of your garment. I haven't met anybody who measures up to that list yet. And, of course, I include myself. We're all on the path. We're all doing our work. Everybody wants the work to be done yesterday. Not going to happen that way. So we're delighted that you're with us. Please pick up the worksheet process. Let's honor those who've been murdered in war, who've been forced to murder in war, who've been maimed and injured physically, mentally, emotionally, and brought those injuries back, destroyed families, destroyed, destroyed communities. And let's create a different space on the planet where we can actually change that dynamic and get back to what humans are originally designed for in the process of creation. And if you have any questions about what humans are designed for, just pick up a newborn child. You know, go, if you need to, go to the hospital. Or remember when you, the last time you picked up a newborn. Jean and I are in a, uh, a resort uh, kind of place right now doing some writing and some work, and we're sitting out at the pool, and here are these little tiny tots running around in such aliveness and such joy and such human life. And the sad thing is that most of that human life will be taken away from them within the next couple of years by a culture that fills them with causes of hostility, fear, grief, rage, pain, sadness, hatred, and vengeance. It's time for us to change that dynamic on planet Earth. And so uh, welcome to the show. Dr. Tim is with us, I believe. Is, is David with us, Jeannie? No. David's not here today. Okay. Dr. Tim, how do you be? Doing very well, thank you. Awesome. Well, Jeannie we, tells me that we have a... Oh, go ahead. I'm just watching the chat room, and I'll let you know if something comes up there. Fabulous. Well, Jeannie's on the uh, control panel, and she's got a caller, so we're going to invite that caller in, Jeannie. Hello, 541. Welcome to the show. Hi, Michael. It's Julie calling. Julie. Hey there, young Cal lady. From California, I guess I am right now. <laughs> Cool. Hey, I got a lot going on. I have so much going on. And, you know, I helped somebody go through a worksheet, and I was able to help them, but I'm not helping myself very well, and I need to um, to declare some things, I guess, some, some sort of ugly things inside myself that um, I know that I have the tendency, and, you know, I want to clear it out. So you up for this? <laughs> Uh, you know yeah, what I'm go for it. about. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, you know, there's a there's a wonderful adage that comes out of um, uh, Richard Bach's work, and he says we teach best that which we most need to learn. So I acknowledge you for teaching forgiveness, so that you can learn it. And uh, you know, <laughs> we we all are moving toward finding those deeper hidden places. Sometimes decoding our own past is a challenge, and and decoding our own genetics 
where there are a thousand generations of, of those dynamics of hiding from ourselves is, is quite a task. So I'm delighted that you are out there supporting people and doing it and that you're moving to the next level in your own process. So how can we support you? Well, thank you very much. Um, well, I'm noticing how I'm projecting onto others um, who I see having similar weaknesses as I do, but I'm trying to fix it out there and, help, and be of some assistance to others more than I know how to help myself. Or, Well, I must say I mm-hmm. do know how with the worksheets, but I don't do them. And so what ends up happening is I end up misusing the tools. I actually end up attacking others with what they should be doing to, you know, fix their lives. And, and I and I do that. I just have to admit I do that, and it doesn't feel good. So I'm not really, like, I'm not really sure about, you know, being my brother's keeper, but I know if I'm going to be a good brother's keeper, I need to be a more fit keeper and keep myself more clean. And, of course, that seems like it's forever for that. But it's kind of like how do you balance helping others well, I, I know the answer to that, too, because I know when I feel clean, when I really do the work and really clear something out, I'm, I'm a better uh, assistance to others. I presence a different energy, you know? Right. So so my main issue with, with what's in front of me quite a bit lately is um, people telling stories about their lives that they believe are true, and the stories are told over and over and over again, and, um, you know, and their life is in a disarray, and um, there's, you try to, I try to help, and I, I get refused, because there's so much story there that there's just a lot of resistance to making any progress, and so I'm just wondering, well, what's my story? <laughs> okay, well, that was, that was going to be my question, uh, yeah. Julie, is to recognize that if what disturbs you in another or seems to cause disturbance in you, which really means resonates disturbance in another, is that they are stuck in their story and not doing their work is, and you've already said, you're not doing the worksheet, so you're not doing what you're inviting others to do, and you have, it sounds like you have hostility towards self that gets projected onto others because you're still telling your story. And yeah. when yeah. when you get notice when you get into stress when there's no stress, that's not the case. But notice that when stress comes up in a particular situation, let's let's just use an example. Let's say a, a relationship situation. So if a relationship situation comes along, and I have a story that goes back to you know let's say my relationship with my parents when I was a kid, and all of a sudden, that person that I'm in relationship with gives me the look or does something that my mind interprets as dissing me. Notice that I'll go back to some variation on the theme of the story that I've not forgiven or resolved from my relationship with my parents. And so that person who gives me the gift of bringing that quality of upset up in me, the ability, the, to, to, the, the capacity to experience some form of hostility or fear, around a given issue is the person who gives me the gift to face and remove that hostility or fear in me. If I didn't have any uh, hostility toward myself for being stuck in my story and I saw someone who was stuck in their story, I would stand in connectedness and patience and support them coming out of their story and coming into truth. In fact, you might give a listen. You know, I was just uh, sharing before you came on uh, the, the fourth link under download worksheets. And that's a a worksheet session that we did on the radio show where this gentleman really was in a story about somebody else. And I think, if I remember correctly, it's been a couple of months, but I think maybe seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten times I had to invite him to come out of his story and come back to what's going on inside himself. Let's stop the story. Let's deal with what's going on inside of self. And, you know, there's a great line in The Course in Miracles, that says problems are meaningless, but don't tell that to somebody who's in the middle of one. When somebody's identity is built out of their story and you are threatening to take that story away, you're threatening their very lives to their internal process. It seems like a threat, like you're taking away their very identity, which in a sense you are. 
However, of course, that identity that you're helping them to get rid of or appearing to be taking away from them is covering the bigger identity of who they truly are, the being that they are. And, you know, everybody has to work through their story to get to being through their false identity, the self-identity that's based in their victimhood and how terrible this was and how they did this to me and how they did that to me, they're going to have to work through that. Now, you know, one of the instructions I give when we do an intensive at Heartland is, is you know, we start out and say, you know something, everybody? I'm not interested in your story. Now, there may be some elements of your story that you're going to have to share with us in order for us to be with you and support you in working through whatever your issue is. But if you're going to tell me all the details about how Charlie did this and then when he said this and then Mary came in the room and then when Mary came in the room, she answered the phone and she left. If you've got to tell me all that, I'm going to short circuit it and stop and say, yes, and what are you feeling? What's going on inside of you? What's your reality? What's your issue here? And that fourth link under download worksheets is, is a pretty powerful example of how many times and how slippery the non-being mind can be at going back to its story. And once I'm willing to let go of my story, I'll have the patience to be with somebody who's stuck in their story and support them in being able to let go of it and move into a different space. Hmm. Yeah. We actually have a uh, we had a, a musician at Heartland uh, several years ago who uh, who wrote a song. He was kind of like the music director, and uh, he wrote a song um, entitled "Stuck in My Story, My Shame and My Glory." And most people are. That's just the condition of the world. That's where most people live. Most people live most of their lives in the hallucination of their story instead of living their lives in the being of a human life, the active presence of love. Hmm. That's right. You know what? I really appreciate listening to you because I, I just recognized <clears throat> that um, the elements that I've been experiencing lately um, came from my mom being fearful when she was divorcing my father. And... Um, I picked up all those resonances and I've been replicating them. And I, I'm noticing that I, it, you know how you say uh, the ego or the non-being is a cheap replica of true living and true life, and true love? Yeah. You yeah. know, the, even other people's stories are a cheap replica, you know? Yeah. If, I would get, That's right. if I would get to my story, I would be able to cut through it. Because my story yeah. is a replica of other people's stories. So it's like, like you say, re-experiencing the past. It doesn't exist anymore except that I'm holding it in place. And so I have right. to forgive it. So, so. then, so then the, uh, the idea here, you know, and I think you've just answered your own question very beautifully, is that this person, and I think you started out yesterday sharing with us how it's an older person who keeps going back over and over and over. And so the reality that brings up for you, and, and you know, here's one of the beautiful things of choosing to teach this work, is everything you've never dealt with is going to be served up on a platter right square in your face. And so the pain, the grief, the loss, you know, let's, let's look at what you just shared about mom. Mom is separated from dad and in her loss and pain. And so here's this small child, and maybe mom was even expecting you to resolve that for her. And here's a small child who is experiencing the loss of the presence of mother because mother's so lost in her pain she can't be there for the child. Oh, and goodness. that's a pretty painful, that's a life-robbing experience for a child. And so now your forgiveness work, your next worksheet is going to be around forgiving, not mother, not yourself, but forgiving that capacity to experience loss on that level. And as you do that, instead of being in your frustration or turmoil when you're listening to that older person go through their stuff, you're going to be free of that, and you will be the presence of love in that space, which is what will help this person melt 
their attachment to their story and their identity of I am my story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to do that for sure. And thank you. And um, one thing I've noticed um, in some older people, there's a label called dementia, whatever you want to call it, you know. And I'm noticing, I don't know if that's the factor where they're trying to hang on to their story because otherwise they don't, you know, they don't know who they are or what's going on, you know. Um, but if Actually, I'm in there trying to help it dissolve, then what, you know? Hopefully the being well, emerges and heals all that, hopefully. Well, yeah, actually, the person who's going into that dementia, I would offer that rather than all the, you know, the, the, the world the game is looking for physical causes. Let's see if we can find the physical pill that we can sell for millions to uh, to fix dementia in people. But uh, dementia, I believe, to to a great degree is the person who is in the space of, I'm really tired of my own story, and I don't know how to get rid of it, so I'm checking out. <laughs> too much stress, too much to deal with. My offering is that all um, psychosis, dementia, and such is a stress management device. It's the compulsive use of denial and dissociating from things in order to be able to cope where I don't have the tools with which to cope with my life. When I acquire the tools to cope with my life, and I begin to use those tools, then I can eradicate those stress management devices. Most people are actually addicted to managing their stress by dissociating from what they don't want to deal with in their lives. The extreme of that is dementia. When I dissociate from everything, I'm like, I don't, I don't even have contact with who you are. I, you know, here I am, canceled the thought, this old person, and here comes my child who obviously I've spent years raising, et cetera, et cetera, and I don't even know you. I have dissociated to the extreme extent because I am so stressed and my culture hasn't given me the tools with which to manage my stress. For those who are interested in more on this topic, you might want to go to our website and order the DVD, Getting the Stress You Need because stress is a necessity, but when we become overwhelmed with stress, the, the way our culture teaches to deal with it is simply to hide from ourselves what we can't handle, what we can't deal with. You know, we've all heard of the extreme of that when somebody, say, for instance, has a horrendous accident, the mind just totally shuts it out. Well, that's the extreme of the example, but the person who's in a situation in their relationship or in their finances or in their business where they just don't know how to cope with and don't know how to deal with the stresses of the moment, the, 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 the most common way in this culture to deal with that is by dissociating from whatever they can't deal with. And that leaves people with less and less and less and less and less contact with the actual external world and more and more contact with the internal story that keeps them out of touch with what's going on. You'll notice a lot of people in dementia, they go off on temper tantrums and raging. They, you know, people will say, well, you know, she was such a sweet little old lady and everybody loved her so much and she loved everybody and she was so wonderful. And now in her dementia, if somebody comes in and she swears like a trooper and rages at them, well, guess what? Her life was spent being such a sweet little lady because the only way she knew how to deal with what was going on was to dissociate from the rage and the pain. And now what runs her in that extreme state of so-called dementia is the rage and the pain that she's never resolved. Give that person the forgiveness tool and support them in using it, inspire them to use it. That will change. Wow. Just by guiding through the worksheet. You know, because, I mean, I don't have the answers for her at all. I have no idea. It's a little scary to be around that anger, similar to my childhood, and the fear and all that. Well, I was stuff, just, just going to say, is it scary or does it bring up fear for you? Yes, it brings up fear for me. <laughs> brings yeah. up fear for you. So if you become a fear-free being, then whatever she does won't bring up fear for you because they're not, you don't have the capacity left in you for fear. Oh, when yeah. we, when we, the minute that we take something that's internal, 
and we put cause in the external world. So when I hook what's going on inside of me that can only be resolved internally to what's going on in the outer world, all of a sudden I've dissociated from that part of me. I can now no longer resolve that part of me. Mm-hmm. Once I recognize that, gee, in this situation it brings up fear, as you just stated from my childhood, then I can apply forgiveness to my fear and I've benefited from this person who's in such anger and rage about her life. I've benefited because I used it as the opportunity to forgive what it resonated in me. And if you go back into the Aramaic language, all the places where you hear them saying that Yeshua tells people to forgive your brother, uh, you know, or he forgives them, it doesn't say that in Aramaic. What it says is, forgive as to your brother. So if you and I interact, you know, Yeshua would say to me, Michael, uh, if, if what Julie just said brings up pain for you, you must forgive as to Julie. That doesn't mean I forgive Julie. It means that in my interaction, Julie brought up some pain for me, and I forgive as to what she brought up in me. So in this situation with this older woman that you're working with, when you interact and you say she or that situation makes me fearful, I just dissociated from cause of my own fear. I can now no longer resolve my fear. When I just shift my language, my mind will show me a totally different world. Ah, my interaction with her brings up my fear, and I want to eliminate my very capacity to have fear. Then I apply forgiveness, not to her, not to me, but to my fear, and I become a fear-free being. If my interaction with her brings up rage, you know, if, if, if my, let's say as a child, when that issue was going on with mom, she would rage, and the fact that I had mom's genetics, I, I have the capacity for rage that mom has, and then mom pours that rage in my direction, I like a sponge soak all that rage in, and now, 50 years later, somebody resonates those brain cells, and I want to pour out that rage, When I stop and go, oh, she doesn't enrage me when she does this. She shows me the stored rage that I have, and I forgive as to what she has brought up in me. I forgive my rage. I remove rage. And now the gift I've got from working with her is that I get to become a rage-free being. Wow, I get it. I think I get that now. Thank you. That's the work. And so so the, the, the bottom line is, and especially if you choose to be a teacher of this, which you're doing, and I'm, I'm awesomely impressed by it, when, when you select to become the teacher of this work, be willing to be taught. And you are going to resonate and be shown everything that you need to work through in order to represent this work fully and accurately. You'll get every opportunity that you need. And this young lady is an awesome gift. I've actually seen people over the years who, when they run out of things to work on, actually go looking for somebody to resonate something in them, to show them <laughs> what it is that they need to deal with. Uh-huh. Uh, um, <clears throat> could I bring up a related thing that uh, quickly? Um, I was I was 12 when my parents divorced, so I was old enough to become a referee and 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 ended up basically spending my life energy dealing with their stresses and mm-hmm. therefore thwarting my own potential which right now the stress that I'm in where it's similar is um no job no home what am I going to do and yet I know I have so many talents and so much potential but I I've, I've got to unlock myself to it and get back into that creative flow and so Uh so i think this is all related and if i just do worksheets on it i think that's the key that's what i'm asking you if you under if you see that too that's where your worksheets are yeah you're right on track that's awesome (sighs) wow good breath now that's the kind of breath That that changes everything that was the hopeful I feel relief breath, like there is a yep. way. <laughs> yep. Yeah, thank you. 
I'll let you talk to some other people, Michael. Thank you. Hey, delighted that you called. Blessings. Appreciate it so much. Bye. Jeannie, anybody else on the call? Dr. Tim, anything happening in the chat room? I would hope that that conversation stirred up some thoughts for folks. Well, people had some comments to indicate they were listening, nothing uh, very dramatic. Um, They were talking about when a healer extends their love and provides healing to someone else, they also receive in the natural process. So um, most people hang on to their stories trying to prove to others that their feelings are real. And so then there was just, that was quite a while ago in the conversation and people have just been listening, so. Cool. Well, how did the support group go last night in the, in the big city of Crystal Lake? It went very well. We had the second half of uh, On Creating Consciously and that we watched, and then the discussion was pretty intense, so it went um, later than usual, and then somebody came up with a worksheet they wanted to do, so we did that, and the group ran a little bit late, but the worksheet was on fear, and this person had a situation where they got just stuck in negative thoughts and worry about what would happen if they went out when they had negative thoughts, and so they felt like they couldn't leave the house. And so they did a worksheet on that process and discovered that they had given a lot of power in their belief system to the idea that other people's negative thoughts could harm them. And so it was better to just stay inside and not expose themselves to other people's negative thoughts. So it was a very productive worksheet and a very uh, lively group. And um, just another one for the books. Cool. Fabulous. Well, uh, do you have any thoughts to add to the conversation with um, with Julie uh, from your broad experience in working people through these kinds of issues? Well, I think that it's it's uh, what's the word? It's encouraging to hear her recognize that she's been using the tool to attack people or to use their stories to attack them because if I don't recognize I'm doing it, I can't stop it. So I want to applaud her for uh, having the awareness and then the courage to admit that she's doing that. And... um, and say the only way out is through. I mean, you really have to do the worksheets to dismantle the stuff inside of you that has been resonated by somebody else. The minute I think somebody else did this to me or put this in me, now I've created that prison and I've thrown away the key. And um, I think you said it really well, especially at the end when she had that deep breath, she's finally getting it, that she can look inside herself at issues and beliefs she locked away a long time ago, and that's where she'll find the freedom to act differently today. Because the the people in her life today who are either going ahead with the work or who are refusing to do the work, they aren't the ones causing her pain. Right. Well, and I think a, a good uh, a good point you make there is that we're throwing away the key when we go into that state, and most people don't recognize what the action of throwing away the key is. When you recognize that if you're in some sort of pain or turmoil, and you enter into a conversation about someone else, you just threw away the key to your own healing. That's such a monumental piece of information to understand. The minute that you're in some sort of pain, turmoil, hostility, fear, grief, loss, whatever, and you start talking about someone else, you're moving into the roots of war and you're throwing away the key to your own healing. You're taking whatever the issue is that you refuse to be responsible for and resolving yourself, and you're wearing it right out here on your sleeve. Everybody in town now knows what it is. Everybody in town is going to bounce off of it. You'll find it happening to you over and over and over again, and you'll keep going 
what, what, what's going on here? Why can't I heal this issue? Because I've thrown away the key. Yeah, the, the, you do it by having a conversation about others when you're in pain instead of starting to look inside yourself for the root of your pain and start to change cause there. It happens so often in relationships with, let's say, for instance, with spouses where one spouse is in some sort of turmoil, the kind of turmoil they've maybe been in their whole lives, relationship after relationship after relationship. And here they are, you know, sometimes decades later, and they go into some sort of pain, and their thought process, their feelings are all pointed toward their spouse. Their conversation's all about if only you, and they think if I could just escape you, then I wouldn't have to experience what's going on inside of me. It just threw away the key to their healing. Go ahead, Tim, you started to say something? Well, the, one of my favorite books is The Mirror Theory, and one of my favorite lines from that book is, the minute I think someone else has to change in order for me to be happy, the key to happiness is lost. Yep. That's for true. And again, you know, the big the big point I'd like to make is the way you can tell if you're doing that is you're in pain and you talk about somebody else or something else. That's that's like the, the, to me, there's the twist. There's where it happens. And the way to correct is, of course, if I'm in pain, I start talking about what I need to do to resolve and to heal my pain rather than start talking about everybody else and what they've done to me and how this is all their fault and blah, 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 blah. Big key. Yep. Well, in the chat room, we had somebody say, when I hang on to my story, don't I continue in my blockage of truth? And then That's the way to do it. And then someone else responded, no, you don't block your truth, parentheses, no blocks are good, close parens, but you tend to spread that frequency of feeling the events into future interactions and prolong pain if it's pain. Then the question was, continue in non-being, continuing in, in the effectual living, and not cause. And then someone's asking for an example of the question. So there's a little bit of confusion about semantics, but I think people are getting it. If I'm focused on what's going on outside of me, I'm stuck because what I'm experiencing is actually happening inside of me. And it's my own creation by what I'm choosing to focus my conscious awareness upon. You know, you talk about the the nine bit mind and what it's able to process in any given moment and the twenty trillion bits of life that are available for it to choose from. And how do I know when I'm choosing incorrectly? Because I'm feeling some form of hostility or fear. And my warning system has gone off and if I'm paying attention to it, I'll look inside myself for the solution because inside myself is where the cause is. Exactly. So so a good example might be, you know, two people interact. Let's just use the example that Julie just gave us on the phone. So she's working with a woman who really doesn't want to uh, to look at her part in what's happening and she wants to keep telling her story. And so... Then as a facilitator, Julie goes into trauma and pain. And frustration and, and attacks uses the tools of forgiveness to attack this person for what they're doing. Uh, ostensibly, that's, that's the story in the mind. However, the minute that the conversation starts about the person that she's facilitating and how she's and blah, 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 that's the way that I keep from dealing with there's a cause in me. As soon as Julie was able to slow down and take a breath and get conscious and start to talk about herself in that situation, all of a sudden she comes up with, oh, yeah, well, my mom was older, my dad left, and uh, here's, you know, here's what she's reminding me of. So, so the internal cause can't be seen as long as the whole conversation is about what the person she's facilitating is doing. Shift the focus of the conversation to, oh, 
Well, in that situation, I felt frustration and, gee, as I really tap into it, I can realize that this is very much like what happened to me when I was 12. Ta-da! All of a sudden, now, remember, there's such a tiny bit of information. Uh, for those who might be new to the ideas that we're talking about, there's such a tiny bit of information out of what's, what's going on in the, uh, the conscious level uh, that's available compared to what's going on at the unconscious level. And that tiny bit of information that I'm conscious of is directed by my words. And so if I start to form a new habit of speaking to myself and to others about myself and what's going on inside of me when I'm in some form of turmoil or trauma, my mind can now shift in, into and focus on what's going on inside of me. If I have a conversation about, well, this woman, and she doesn't want to, and when she says this, and when she does that, and, uh, and she frustrates me, and she angers me, and uh, my nine-bit mind is filled with information about her. I can't possibly resolve what's going on inside of me while I'm focused on somebody else. If I want to deal with cause, I've got to go where cause is. The one thing that you can always, 100% of the time, be absolutely 1,000% assured of is every time you're in pain, there is a cause for that pain inside of you. Outside of you may be the trigger. Inside of you is the cause of the pain. So it becomes a case of any circumstance or situation where I can't hold to a connected space of a human life, a connected space of being, any place where I can't do that, I have work to do. It always comes back to me. I, I know that sometimes we'll have people who will be at Heartland and they'll want to tell their story. You know, they'll be in an intensive and they'll want to tell their story. And I cut them off at the past, as I did in that, uh, that fourth link under Download Worksheets with that radio show uh, where Richard went through that worksheet. And thank you, Richard, if you happen to be listening. It was a great example. Uh, but if... if I do that, and, and people are like, well, well, I just want to say what I want to say. Why don't you just let me talk or let me just say this? It's like, well, if, if you'd like to, to keep living your life stuck in your illusions of external cause, then, you know, that's certainly up to you, but you, that's not what you came here for. You came here to be supported to, in, in changing that whole dynamic in your life. And so, no, I'm not going to tolerate you speaking about somebody else while well, you've got something going on inside of you. I am here to support you going back inside yourself and finding the part of you that you need to forgive, that you need to remove from your structure. When you do that, guess what's going to happen? All the relationships around you are going to change. All the dynamics in your life are going to change because you're starting to deal with cause. Cause for me is always inside of me. Cause for you is always inside of you. When I pretend that you can cause something to happen inside of me, I'm now in codependence. And, and that means the good, the bad, and the ugly. If I pretend that you can cause wonderful things to happen inside of me, oh, you make me feel so wonderful, I'm in codependence. I'm pretending that you're causing me. Or you make me feel terrible. I'm pretending that you're causing me. I'm in codependence. The idea of this work is to end codependent relationship and to end codependent conversations and to keep drawing ourselves and each other and to be support. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. Sometimes I get stuck in my story too. And it's wonderful to have a support around me. You know, it's wonderful to have Jeannie to be there to support me in being able to shift that conversation and to shift into, oh, what's inside of me that I need to deal with? Because we're all hypnotized by our own stories. Our stories have been going on for a thousand generations. They are so hugely energy impacted that sometimes they just entrap us. And there's nothing like a little help from your friends to support you in being able to get out of that and be able to actually go to a conversation about what's inside of me that is causing my pain that I need to deal with. And it's the place people most don't want to go because they've lived lives of codependence and blame. It's all somebody else's fault. It's somebody else that needs to change. Once we get that it's only me that needs to change, then what's going to happen 
is we're going to get to change the way the game and the world is played. We're going to put an end to war. And we're going to actually get to experience what a, a world filled with true human lives would look like. Imagine if that grumpy-faced guy or gal that you wake up with in the morning when it's a grumpy face, imagine if when you woke up and they woke up, each of you was in this awesome newborn state of being, and you looked at each other and celebrated your human lives, the awesome presence of love that you are. How different would your household be? Imagine if every morning when the child was being brought up, instead of getting up with a grumpy dad who had a fight with the boss yesterday and, you know, having the orange thrown at him for breakfast with a a gruff tone, imagine if the dad looked at the child and said, what an awesome presence of love you are. I am so delighted you're in our world. Imagine if that happened every day, 100% of the days of a child's life. Imagine if... For each of us, and I go back and I think about my own childhood, imagine if each of us as children, each day, we had two parents who went, you are such an awesome presence of love in our world. How fabulous is it to have you here? Instead of, well, you know, some of the the answers I've gotten when I asked the question in in a workshop, well, you know, what kind of messages did you get from your parents? Oh, you're stupid. You'll never amount to anything. I wish you were a boy or a girl. Oh, you, you, you're the cause of all the trouble if you'd never come into our... I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've heard who've, who've shared that they got the message from one or the other of their parents that they, arriving in that family, ruined their parents' lives. What a horrendous, horrific message to give to a child that's made of the stuff called love. Imagine if each and every one of us, and and every one of us, whoever's listening, we've all got our stories. Imagine if the only story you had to tell about your childhood was, yeah, gee, I remember that day I got up in the morning and, you know, I was feeling a little grumpy and my dad looked at me and went, what an awesome presence you are. How different would our world be? What would an actual human world look like? And that's what we're here to do, to establish the presence of human life on Earth. And fortunately... Nothing you have ever done, I don't care how terrible, how horrible, how awful, nothing you have ever done can touch the human beingness of you. I don't care what terrible things have been done to you. None of that has ever touched the beingness of you. When you awaken to the beingness of you and you start to bring that into your world and make that your story, You will transform everything in your physiology. You will transform your disease states. You will transform your emotional states. You will transform the world around you. Imagine what that world's going to look like. Gee, do we have any callers? Nobody's calling. Gee, we haven't stirred up any interesting calls. Well, we did have some in the chat room. Go ahead. We We did have something in the chat room. Somebody just said, I have a sister who I forgave and I moved on. I let her back in my life. She won't let go of the past. She continues to make false stories of her actions, telling people lies. I forgave, but I must move on. Is it all right to delete someone from your life? Well, my first order of business when you when you say I forgave her is I'm going to suggest that you made a big mistake by forgiving her. Take that forgiveness back and don't ever forgive her. Okay, that's a starting point. Because the minute you say, I forgive you, you just entered into the conversation about how you were cause of something inside of me. And now I'm stuck in a false world. So that's false forgiveness. That's what our culture has taught us to do. And that's what keeps us stuck in our story, is forgiving others. Now, if you choose, because she did some off-the-wall stuff, to pardon her, then you'll pardon her, and that part will be done. Then, knowing that you've only pardoned, you have not forgiven yet, you will go inside yourself and let's say there's 
so whatever the quality of pain is in you, if it's frustration, if it's rage, if it's grief, if it's loss, you know, if it goes back to being three years of age when your sister was five, your older sister, and you wanted to go with her and she turned around and slapped you in the face and said some of the most terrible things ever, if that's the root of the problem, then the forgiveness work will be about the child of three removing the pain of the insult from the five-year-old sister. That will be the forgiveness work. Once that's gone, your need to move on from the relationship will disappear. Now, you may choose to say, you know, I want to live a certain way. I want to live in a certain kind of conversation. And so I see that you want to live in a different conversation. If you choose to do that, that's okay with me. I bless you. I love you. And I'm going to move on. Of course you have the right to do that. But be careful that you don't move on thinking you've forgiven her and you walk away with all the pain that you hold related to her. Elsewise, you'll just have to find somebody else to play it out with. When you forgive that in you, you will become a space of compassion and love for her. Please tap into the, uh, actually, the easy way to tap into this radio show is if you go to the website, www.whyagain.com, and on the right-hand side in the upper corner, there's a link that says Sample Worksheet. That's the same link as the link number three under Download Worksheets. Listen to that show. Here's a lady who's uh, a medical doctor, very brave woman, and if you happen to be listening, we, we so thank you for doing that worksheet with us on the show that day. We had been out in um, Oregon, and this young lady was introduced to the workshops or the worksheets after we left. So she called in with some questions. And we actually walk her through a whole worksheet. And she starts out with an issue around uh, her uh, father's estate and how the person who was handling his estate, uh, you know, blew the taking care of the house and cost her a lot of money. And she's really mad, really angry about that. She moves from that worksheet to the next depth as she's doing in this one worksheet, she moves to the next depth of what's really going on, and she goes back to where a, um, uh, a another physician who's threatened by the fact that she's healed a child who has cancer using nutritional means, and the oncologist was out of business in regard to this child, comes after her tooth and nail and has her medical license taken away. She deals with the rage of that, and, and as she shares in, in, you know, in the live radio show, she shares how she was visualizing getting a gun and killing this guy. And then she gets to the next level where she realizes it's really about her early relationship with dad. And she ends up, at the end of the worksheet, in a state of compassion in regard to dad, in regard to the oncologist, and in regard to the person who's taking care of her father's estate. Now, that doesn't mean you don't hold people accountable for the behavior, but she comes to a space of connected compassion. She's rediscovering, as she relives those realities in her mind, her own human beingness and her capacity to be compassion instead of be rage, hate, and fear. It's an awesome show to listen to. It's one of the most powerful worksheets I've ever seen anybody do. I would suggest that you give that a listen. And then, with your sister in mind, you do some worksheets and, and just see what you come up with. And it would be fabulous if you would pick up the phone and call us and, as you do those worksheets, share some of them, some of the things you come up with. You know, as Julie just shared uh, in the early part of the show, you know, it was all about this woman who wouldn't do her work and was stuck in all these stories. And, and she realizes, no, actually it's about me being 12 years of age and my mother is in pain and stuck in her story and I have all this pain I've never resolved in my life. That's always the case. It's never caused from that side. Does that bring a response to him in the chat room from... Uh, Yes, uh, she says that she listened to the response and she will do the worksheet and she thanks you. Awesome. Well, we would really love to hear the results of those worksheets. We would love for you to give us a call. Uh, our calling number, whenever you choose to, is 646-200-4169. And we would just love to, uh, to share in your success or to support you through the challenge. 
if there's some challenges in doing those worksheets. That would be an, an awesome opportunity and something we just really appreciate the ability to do uh, on the show. You might want to mention that uh, it, it comes to mind to think of something a little less intense than this lifelong issue or recent life issue with a sister who she's thinking about maybe cutting out of her life and to start with an issue that's a little bit less intense so she can demonstrate to herself that the worksheet process is useful and that she can stay conscious through the whole process because it sounds like a pretty intense set of issues with her her sister right definitely Definitely, that, that, a good thought there. If you haven't been doing worksheets on a regular basis, uh, tackling your big major life issue is like you know getting up in front of the pitcher for the New York Yankees the first time you pick up a baseball bat. Not likely you get a home run. And so starting with the little stuff and really building the strength and developing the brain cells for how to do forgiveness is, is an awesome gift to give yourself. And Jeannie just informed me that we have a caller. We've got just a few minutes left, so let's tap into our caller. 786, you're on the air. Who have we Michael. got? Where are you calling from? Hi, Michael. Are you here? How are you doing? Hey there, young lady. I'm blessed and highly favored. How about you? Oh, the same, the same. Very much the same. I was just getting ready for uh, Chicago, going there early tomorrow morning and doing our introductory talk tomorrow night. So I wanted to get on the call and, and let people know if uh, if they're in that area. You're most welcome. It's uh, it's a donation based night. We just we just have to cover the rent, you know. So you can just come and give any love offering that works for you. Or if you want to just come in and listen for free, you're welcome. And we're going to cover purpose, power, and commitment. We're going to talk about what is your purpose for living on the first night. So I welcome everyone to come. And then the second and third, uh, sorry, on, on the first day of the workshop, which is November the 11th. We are going to go and do super processor spagology. So that's a very cool. interesting process. So, Dayu, we've just got a few seconds left, so I'm just going to invite people to go to the website. The flyers are posted on the website, and that's Great. in Naperville, Illinois. Dayu will be there. We did announce it yesterday on the show. And, by the way, the flyers there on Sunday will start here in uh, St. Petersburg in Florida. Uh, next oh, Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, 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 Wednesday, Thursday. Blessings. Safe journey to Chicago. And uh, our show is coming to a completion. It's been a fast hour. It seems like time just flies by when you're having fun, and we're delighted to be sharing these tools with you. Uh, please check out our website. Uh, come join us in St. Petersburg next week, and uh, then we'll be over on the uh, east coast of Florida, back in Tampa. We've, we've got lots of things planned in Florida this winter. Have the best year yet of your eternal life. Bring a stranger to the show with you tomorrow. Blessings. Thank you for listening to Mind Shifters Radio with the Forgiveness Doctor, Dr. Michael Rice and his wife, Jeannie, who present the internal Aramaic process of forgiveness. Michael and Jeannie are here every Monday through Friday on Earth Angels Radio. For more on Michael and Jeannie, please visit www.yagain.com. That's www.whyagain.com. A-I-N dot com.